I've put together this screencast to show you some of the things that we did with the NCBI page in lab this week. I had a couple of assignments for you to look at fragment sizes using the PCR primers that we'll be using this week for our experiment. And I wanted to give you the screencast to remind you of how to do some of these things in case you get lost as you go on that page. First of all, the easiest way to find NCBI is just to do a Google search. NCBI. Up oh, pops right up there. NCBI homepage. And the first thing I'll show you is how you would find a gene of interest. So if I hop over to Word here, I'll send this to you by email. These are the two genes that we're going to be working with for our project, the apyrase gene, which we've been playing with, and the, this alpha tubulin gene that we just started playing with. Here are the accession numbers. And we've already played with apyrase. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the accession number for the tubulin gene, come over to the, plot, to the NCBI page, and paste it in. And I'm going to search all databases for this tubulin gene accession number. And I have some literature that pops up. And I have uh, one nucleotide record, which is what we want. And here it is, uh, Pisum sativum alpha tubulin. This is one of the two genes that we're going to use for our project. And if we come down here, we have the protein sequence. We have the nucleotide sequence. Now, I can cut and paste this nucleotide sequence if I want it for something else. Once again, if you want to get rid of all these numbers on the left-hand side, click on FASTA format, and that gets rid of all the numbers. And this is what we did in lab this week to copy and paste this sequence to use it in a BLAST search to find similar sequences. Now, we've already done that, um, so what I want to show you is how you would take the primer sequences that I showed you in lab and use those primers in a BLAST search to find where they would fall within this gene sequence to figure out the fragment size. Now some of you in lab were copying and pasting the sequence into a Word document and using the find feature in Word to find your primers and, and you can do that but let me show you how you would use NCBI to do that. So um, I'm going to go back to the NCBI homepage and to the BLAST search page and then let me hop over to Word, and we could try either apyrase or tubulin. Since we've been playing with tubulin, let's try that first. I'm going to double click on our forward primer. So this is the primer that's going to anneal on the left-hand side of our sequence. And I'm going to copy that, hop over to the blast page, and I want to do a nucleotide blast, since I'm searching for nucleotides where it says enter accession number or FASTA sequence, I'm going to paste in the primer sequence from that Word document. And then you want to tell it to search P, because we're doing all this in P plant. And um, I've been in this page already, so it already has other on there. When you come in here, it may say human genomic, but you want to click on others. And you want the nucleotide collection. And for organism, you want to start typing in Pisum, and it'll give you Pisum sativum as an option. So we'll click on that. We don't need to change any of the other settings. We can leave those on default. And then we're going to hit Blast. And then wait. OK. Now notice up on top here, it says, your search parameters were adjusted to search for a short input sequence. The program basically knows that we entered a very short sequence, only 18 letters, and it's optimized its search algorithm to find where that would be. And you've seen these before. Let's scroll down to our hits, and the very first hit is Pisum sativum alpha tubulin, which is what we would expect. One thing I didn't show you in lab, um, if you click on the score for that hit, it'll pop you down to the alignment. Now, Here's where you'd figure out where in the tubulin sequence the primer anneals. So here's the hit for alpha tubulin. Query is the sequence that we entered. It's an 18 base pair PCR primer. You guys designed 20 base pair primers last week in class. This one is 18 base pairs. That, that works fine too, 18 or 20. This one's 18. The subject is the sequence that popped up in the blast search. And so this sequence 
is in the tubulin sequence, the big gene sequence, and notice it says its base pair is 399 to 416. So the first base is 399. So I'm going to write that down on a piece of paper here. And as you're doing these searches, you can do that too. And now, you go back up to the top and go back to the BLAST homepage and go to our Word document. We can check the other primer, copy. And this is the reverse primer. This is the one that's going to read or start from right to left. So this sequence that is highlighted in blue on my screen is the reverse complement of what you would see in that big FASTA format printout of the alpha tubulin uh, gene that we saw when we searched using the accession number. So that's the reverse primer. It goes from right to left and copies the DNA towards the forward primer, which reads from left to right or starts the amplification from left to right. So anyway, I've, I've highlighted that reverse primer. I'm going to copy it, go back over to our BLAST page, click on nucleotide BLAST. I'm going to enter it in the search box. Now notice it already has other and nucleotide collection and pisum sativum already in there. And then I would just hit blast. Um, I'm not going to do that because uh, I want you to do that. And uh, once again, when you've done that, go down to that first hit, which will hopefully be once again the tubulin gene, and look for the base pair numbers that this primer anneals to. The first primer started at base 399. Look to see where this primer anneals and take that largest number, and that's going to be on the far right side of the gene. And now you know that the PCR fragment that's going to be produced stretches from base pair 399 to wherever this primer anneals. So that's how you would find the fragment for tubulin that you're going to make. Um, you can do the exact same thing with the apyrase primers in this Word document, these right here, to figure out where they anneal and how large that fragment would be. And then the primers that you design for apyrase, of course, you can just look on your sheet of paper and figure out what the stretch is between those. So that's how you would use tubulin to look for the size of the fragments produced by these primers and actually to test the primers to make sure that they anneal to the gene that they should be annealing to. And at least in the case of this first tubulin primer, that, that worked. Uh, and you can check the other ones as well. So as you do this, if you have any questions, uh, email me. I'm also going to email you a mystery gene. Uh, I'm going to give you a pisum sativum sequence that uh, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, and I want you to use a BLAST search. Once again, just enter it right in this window here. Search against Pisum sativum, and I'll give you a mystery gene sequence that you can check uh, and use BLAST to tell you what gene it, it came from. So good luck, and I'll see you on Wednesday.